I think DJI's biggest challenge is going to implement that to the hardcore hobbyists, also the racer guys where you have drones that are as small as they can be without compromising too much on strength and you are implementing a system that is proprietary and has a great big silver box with two antennas sticking out of the back of it. I think that's going to be DJI's biggest challenge is to implement that into the current racing class. At the moment, where I see that type of implementation, that digital video or digital FPV is more very much in the way DJI advertised it in their video, where you are going out into canyons and, mm -hmm. and wilderness and forests and you want to be able to see everything in high detail. From a racer's perspective, the idea is to just have the lightest quad and fastest quad that you can have to get around the course as quickly as possible and beat your opponents. I'm not sure if their priority is going to be, yeah, but I want to see brand of the flags that I'm passing at 100 plus kilometers an hour. I think that's really in the, in the forefront of their thinking. I think for freestyle and for scenic flights, that's going to work really well. You know, it's definitely going to have a place in the hobby. I just don't know if it's going to mix well at the moment. I think give it a few years and if other companies start to mimic it and start to come up with their own or if DJI continue to develop it and continue to come up with smaller modules and, and better ways that you can implement different brands of cameras and antennas and all of these sorts of things, maybe I can see that being the future. I think mm -hmm. it's definitely a step in the right direction. I think it's just going to take some time where it's just going to be, oh cool, I'll just take, bring it home and plug it into my quad and everything's going to work and it's all going to be fine. I think it's, we're still a long way off from that. It depends on their expectation of their FPV experience. Something that we have been challenged with in the past is when people see FPV videos online, sometimes they are watching what the GoPro recorded. So when we show them what you actually see in the goggles, their expectation is like, well, hang on. I saw the video and the dude was flying and it was all, you know, 4K. How come what I see, what I'm seeing in the goggles looks like a badly tuned tube TV from 1980s? You know, it's an analog signal. That is something that we sometimes have to educate our customers on that, yeah, what you're seeing is the recorded image of a camera that's attached. So it's a little bit different. If people's expectations are that they want that HD quality footage as they are flying, yeah, that's definitely something that I would be showing them straight away. And I would need to have a play with it personally here at the store. I would need to have a play to see how we can implement it into existing flight controllers and onto the drones. Can we fit it? How do we fit it? and what effect is it going to have on the flight characteristics is it going to be heavier is it going to is there going to be lag you know is there going to be a latency issue between what the drone sees and what you see in the goggles because you don't want to go oh there's a tree and try to avoid the tree and the drones already hit it yeah that's something that we'll have to play with if people's expectations are yeah i know that fpv is going to be analog and it's got minimal latency and i'm just going to be doing freestyle i'll just put my gopro or the new DJI Osmo camera on it and mm -hmm. I'll record my HD footage that way, then yeah, you can use the current setups that exist. Mm -hmm.